here on the lovely Isle of Tyree in the beautiful summer weather today. We're going to try and look for some grey yellow bumblebees and with me today we've got uh, John Bowler from RSPB who has been looking at these bees for some time now, John, is that right? Uh, yeah, I have, yeah. So we've been looking for great yellow bumblebees and, and what they need on this island for the last 15 years or so. And what they don't need is weather like this. It has to be said, this is just the worst kind of weather. It's cold, it's dreek, it's wet. Uh, but you can see the habitat is here. So as soon as the sun does come out, hopefully tomorrow, maybe later today, uh, we should start seeing bees coming out on this, this lovely flower-rich maca. Uh, the highest level of designation these, these dunes here, SAC, special area of conservation. And it's looking fantastic today with the, so many flowers out, even though, they, even though the weather's not perfect, yes. it's still looking absolutely it, fantastic. Lo loads of flowers, so it's all here for the bees. And this is down to uh, the grazing regime that the, the reef graziers have here, which is winter cattle grazing, he heavily grazed. It's all grazed back during the winter. And then we have this really long grazing break in the summer. So nothing grazing out here just now, just a chance for all these flowers to come through and do what they need to do. So that's really good to help support bees. That there's ag environment schemes in place that can, you know, help tweak this management and, and make it just exactly what we Absolutely. want. Absolutely. So we've been doing a big study of the bees on Tyree, the great yellows, to see where they are. And all the best sites, all of the best sites are currently in EECS schemes. And without that, we could well, you know, lose this habitat. This habitat would be grazed, you'd have a lot fewer flowers. You might still have a few bees, but nothing like the, the concentration that we have at the moment. So it's really important that that keeps going. So last year, this was a real magnet. We had uh, knapweed all over the place, a common knapweed at the back. That's, that's the plant they're really after at the moment. But this was a real draw. So we had, you know, you could see several great yellows. You can almost imagine it, can't you? Several great yellow bumblebees on this. And also using the marsh woundwort over here. Again, very local species on the reef, but it's clear that those are really nectar-rich species. So they go for those. Okay. You watch them fall off the, the flowers. And then if it's a really wet day, they just spend the whole time in the nest, in the nest burrow. You don't see them. Because they're quite big bees, that they'd actually be strong flyers and, and therefore be able to put up with a bit more weather than some of the other bees. You would think that. And it's also, it's, it's a northern bee as well. Its distribution is northern. So you, you think it would like cool climate. And yet, actually, when it's a cool day like this, you don't see them at all. I don't really understand that. So that's great. We've been able oh. to see the bees today. And, and, oh. and this weather, I'm really excited to have seen them at last. And I really didn't expect it. That was brilliant. Amazing. Yeah. yeah. At all in this weather. So it's really good. So how do you know about the, the populations in Terry? Do you know if the populations of these great yellow bumblebees are going up or down? So what we do is we do uh, repeatable transects. So we have, in this area of, of the reef, we have a, an area that we walk, includes this, but we don't spend the whole time here. We'll just, we'll graze past it, have a look, see what's in here, and then do an entire sweep. Uh, it takes one hour, so you spend one hour wandering through the habitat, and you record every bee you see during that period. You know, last week, this wasn't looking so good, so you might've gone for knapweed over here as a bee. Uh, and now this week, this is obviously a very good patch. So you, basically you walk through this area looking for the absolute best bits of, of forage for the bees and record the bees that you see. And that's repeatable. Uh, you could do it next week, the following week. Others could come back next year and do the same thing. August is the month when the queens are out, but also the workers and the, the males should be out later this month too. So you've got the highest density of bees possible and a higher chance of spotting them. Uh, it's a great time to go out and look for them then is uh, oh, August. Uh, definitely. Aug August is the month. Uh, okay. Last year, by mid-August, they'd finished. They'd, they'd had a run of really good weather and all the bees had done what they need to do and they'd finished. Whereas this year, it's a rather later year, mm -hmm. a wetter year, and they're going to keep going probably into September. So that's com that's comparable uh, yeah. uh, over the years because you're doing it over some years will be up and down because of the weather, but over a longer term you can get a yeah, train. Yeah, absolutely. So what you get ultimately is good years and bad years. That's how it seems. Yeah. So last year was very good. This year, I'm not sure. We had a lot of queens early on, but they've struggled this year because the weather's been so poor. And do you know what the trend is just now in Tyree? Have we been doing it enough years so, to have a picture of the I, Tyree the trend? The answer is last year was the best year ever. So in that sense, they've gone up. But we know that in, in between, they've gone up and down. So good years, bad, bad years. But overall, there's been an upwards trend. And that's okay. because we've had an increasing area uh, of maca, good quality maca, that's been had in satisfied or left 
ungrazed during the summer, so all the flowers can come. So it's up. all it's all about the management of the macker. Completely. Really, the management of the macker to make sure that the flowers are there as the food source for when the bees come. Absolutely. Out. So the mackers need to be grazed. There's no, you know, of course they need to be grazed. Yeah. If you didn't graze macker very quickly, it would go rank and yeah. you'd lose all the diversity. Yeah. So it needs to be grazed, but ideally in the winter and the spring, and then have a, a summer grazing break when the bees are out. Uh, or reduce stocking rates, something like that, yeah. so that there's there's chance for the flowers to do what they need to do, the bees could come in and use it, um, and that works, that all works. Yeah, and you can see the amount of flowers and food for them, so if the sun was shining, uh, yeah, you know, if there only. would be a lot of bees, <laughs> but uh, it's really good that we've managed to see some today. Well, we've seen maybe five or six species of bee in half an hour, yeah. including three or four great yellow bumblebees, yeah. so that, that's pretty good, isn't it? That's, that's pretty good, I, I think, and it, it's really good to know that that's associated with farming, and, and it's not something that would work without farming here, so farming is such an integral part of having this mix of biodiverse it's species absolutely here. absolutely critical. Without farming we'd lose most of the, the biodiversity we have here, including yeah. the great yellow bee, including the corncrake. So yeah, no, critical. Mm -hmm.